Hi, Mr. Ford here, and today we're going to be taking a look at building landscapes in Tinkercad. Content covered in this video includes creating a base layer, primary shapes that you can use to uh, make different environmental features, and layering in details using a handful of different shapes. Let's get started. So here I've got a blank platform, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a box and I'm going to turn this box into the base, kind of like the canvas of my landscape. Now, a good thing to remember is that the scale I'm using right now is one millimeter. It's very small. So when you see 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, that's really only two centimeters tall by two centimeters wide by two centimeters long. So what we're going to do is we're going to make my, we're going to make this landscape 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters as its base. So it's going to have a 400 centimeter perimeter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to shrink the top uh, just down to 10 millimeters or one centimeter. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And what that's going to do is it's just going to give us a block to work on top of. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put some basic features on this. And the basic feature we're going to use today is we're going to create a river. We're going to do that using the scribble tool. So I'm going to go ahead here and select scribble. And it's going to open up when I click on my work plane, it's going to open up the drawing function for scribble. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create some lines that are going to represent my river. Head here, a couple lines in. So now that our river is created, we have it as a solid object. We're going to go ahead and drag that over top of our, uh, our block, our base. But we're going to do a couple things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift our river up. We're going to make it taller than our actual base. And the second thing we're going to do is we're actually going to lift it off the ground. Because if we're going to make a hole, if we make a hole with our river like this, we're going to end up with no material underneath, which means when you go to print this, you're just going to have all these little pieces floating around. You're not going to have that base landscape that you're looking for. And so instead, what we're going to do, we're just going to lift this up. And using our uh, river as a whole, we're going to group the two items, our base and our river, and there we go. We've now cut into our base just the very basic outline of a river. And this we could fill with paint, we could fill with epoxy, we could fill this uh, with another printed piece that's just the color of uh, water. But now we've got our basic cut out. Now you could also use some of these other shapes like the spheres and different rounded shapes to make hills. We're not going to do that today. But you could certainly do that and layer them the same way we've kind of layered uh, this river to give you kind of a base to work off of. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go into our drop down menu and we're going to find ourselves some trees. Now when Tinkercad opens to a new project you get this basic shape menu. But if you click the drop down box you can see that there's actually quite a lot of different pre-made shapes that you can use. The key thing to look at is how I'm randomly placing trees and I'm changing their sizes constantly. When you go into a forest, an old growth or a new growth forest, you find trees that are different sizes and diameters. They're wider, they're shorter, they're taller, they're smaller. It really depends. And so when you're creating a forest on a landscape, you're starting to add to a story. Right? The closer you get to the edge of the forest, the younger the trees are going to be because the forest is kind of reaching out. There might be one or two lone tall trees from a seed that's grown really far away. But really, you're telling a story. Now, as you get smaller with these trees, you want to make sure that you're using the zoom in and focus on selected element uh, tools, which are located as the circle icons on the left hand side of your screen. This is going to allow you to move things around. Now, if you need to relocate something that's really small and uh, you can't seem to get a hold of it, you just keep readjusting it, 
what I would suggest doing is actually just grab the z-axis, the height, and just make it really tall. Make whatever your shape is, even if it's supposed to be small, just ridiculously tall to move it around. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and um, shrink it back down to the appropriate size. And that's just going to make it easier for you to move around. So now that we've got kind of our first top layer of trees on here, we're going to go ahead, we're going to go back to just basic shapes, and we're going to create a couple of holes in our platform. And that's because I'm going to be putting some very large buildings on this display when we're done. But I'm going to build those buildings separate, and I'm going to print them separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the base, kind of where the foundation of these buildings would be. And I'm just going to put two rectangular holes into the base of my design. And that's going to help me with two things. One, it's going to give me space to kind of hide glue or different attachment things when I put my two pieces together, if I choose to print this. And two, it's also going to help me save time because I'm not going to accidentally add a whole bunch of trees or details to something that is eventually going to be covered up. So this part of the landscape, I'm just going to create a hole. I'm going to do that here. Uh, we're going to lift it up off the ground, same as we did with the river, so that when we connect them together, uh, I don't have a loss of material at the bottom. I've just got this kind of this little tray, little imprint for my building to go. And like I said, we're going to do two of those. We'll put the other one right here. So now that we've added uh, these two kind of imprints, we know where our buildings are going to be. We can now add our next top layer, and that is roads. And we're going to build roads really simply. We're going to use the box tool. We're going to create some rectangles. And we're going to attach those rectangles together. And all we're going to do to make them obvious is we're going to make those rectangles one millimeter higher than our base level. So I'm going to zoom forward again, and we're going to do that here. So you can see we grab the box tool, and we're just going to stretch it out, make it nice and thin. We're going to make it uh, just one millimeter taller, make sure that it's not kind of sitting over. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some smaller rectangles and connect those and turn them. So it looks like we've got, you know, a road and it's got two driveways that are heading into the buildings that we're going to have there. So now we've got kind of our next layer and we're really starting to fill up this landscape and with not a lot of work. We've really only used, you know, a couple different shapes, mostly the box tool and the scribble tool, uh, as well as, you know, two different types of trees. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make some small buildings. I'm going to picture this space between that big impression, where that big building is going to go, and this creek or stream or river, whatever you want to call this. I'm kind of picturing that like a park. It's going to be a park. So we're going to grab a cylinder here. And we're going to make it really small. We're going to build a couple of pavilions, which are just open-sided buildings. So again, I'm using the Focus on Element tool, which helps zoom in. Uh, that's the icon that's just above the addition symbol and it just zooms into whatever item you're working on, because the item I'm working on right now is only two millimeters tall by one millimeter in width and one millimeter in length. That's not very big. So I'm just going to copy and paste uh, four of those here. Here are my pillars, and then I'm going to use a roof, and I'm going to go ahead and put a roof on this, and then kind of adjust from there. So I adjust my roof, to the right size, and then I slowly lift it over until it's over my building. And then what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to look underneath my work plane, and I'm going to flip myself upside down so I can make sure to uh, move these pillars to the edges so that when they're printing, they really are supporting uh, the main roof. And when I go to print, I might actually end up having to put some supports under here, uh, or else the center of my roof might fall down. But at the same time, this is only about six millimeters apart, so we might get a little bit of droop, but we might actually be able to uh, keep this from collapsing in on itself when it prints. So here we've got our little pavilion. I've built it at the height where it's just at ground level. I'm just going to slowly drag it uh, into place, and uh, we're just going to set it up right here. 
And I'm going to copy and paste a couple more of these. And once I have them kind of where I want them, I might angle them a little bit. Uh, we're going to throw in some trees and really kind of make this look like a park. And so now, just finishing up with these trees, you know, you can really see that we're really starting to fill in the space around our uh, landscape, right? We've got a lot of different layers going on. We've got some buildings, we've got some roads, we've got lots of different trees kind of in random places that kind of tell the story of this landscape. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to put something in this little empty space in the corner here. And I think we're going to build an airport. And what I'm going to do when we build this airport is I'm going to show you what to do when you want to put something that's above your landscape or something that's kind of up in the air. So we're going to fast forward a little bit through this next part while I resize the plane. And then uh, we'll go ahead and I will show you how to do that. All right, and so here we are, we've got our planes, and you can see one of our planes is up in the air. So what we can do when we've got something that it's really close to ground level, but we want it to look like it's flying, we can actually go back to base shapes. And we can create some little supports to kind of hold this plane up so that when it prints, it's not just gonna be this melted piece of plastic on top of our really beautiful landscape. So we're gonna go back to base shapes, and I'm gonna select a cylinder, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to put three cylinders, one under the body of the plane and one under each of the wings. And the reason we're going to do this is so that we have something that kind of supports the primary material and then we also have some supports basically over the, the open air uh, part of the wings so that as the printer is layering it doesn't accidentally you know, drop material because the material hasn't had time to harden. After we finish those supports, we're gonna go ahead and throw in some more shapes. Uh, the same way we did for the road to make the airfield. And, but this time, because we're gonna have a little turnaround at the end of the airfield, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create kind of a, a custom shape. So we're just gonna lift these planes up here, bring in our airfield a little bit so it uh, looks like it's you know, appropriately sized. So we're gonna have an incoming runway and an outgoing runway. And I wanna connect these together, kind of like a, a big U. So we're going to select a tube, then we're going to select a box, and we're actually going to get rid of half of this tube. Then we're going to go ahead and layer it a couple of times, and then combine everything together so that we kind of have this one solid piece of road. And then to clean up some of these uh, messier pieces on the end here, we're just going to put in a couple more buildings, make a little air uh, traffic controller tower, and that's it. That's our airfield. So now that we've got this built, we have a couple of choices. We can go ahead and we can uh, connect all of these shapes together. But if we choose to download this file with all the individual shapes, we don't necessarily have to connect all the individual trees and planes and things like that to the main base. They can stay just where they are. This can be kind of helpful because if we go to do a test print and say one of our planes doesn't work or our pavilions are too droopy, we can go back in and we can change those shapes without having to deselect everything that is on our base. And so when we zoom out here, there is our landscape. Pretty detailed. Now, of course, there were lots of points here where we were moving at super speed all sped up. All told, this took me about 42 minutes. 42 minutes to do several layers of detail in this landscape. We still have to create some buildings, but on a whole, our landscape is ready to go. I'm Mr. Ford, and this has been Building Landscapes in Tinkercad. Content we covered in this video included how to create a base layer, introducing primary shapes into your base layer, and then layering in details on top of details until you have a usable landscape.